Hello. We began our monthly study last week by focusing on the gift it is to be a part of the family of God and a member of our church. We can demonstrate how valuable these treasures are to us when we work to ensure that our congregation is unified. Each congregation is tasked with being a witness of the glory of God to the world, and each member has an important part in keeping unity intact among the community of believers. The world will know whether or not we are followers of Jesus by the way we interact with one another. If we are to fulfill the mission of our church, unity is not just important, it's critical. Why is unity so important? It shows that the congregation is focused on the one who unifies us as all believers, Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross to rescue sinners and reconcile their relationship with the Heavenly Father. We are all in need of a Savior, and we all come before him on equal ground with the same standing. This knowledge is the gift that unifies us. When our congregations are united, we tell the world all around us that the love of God and the work of Jesus is the most valuable treasure we have. When unity and love are present, congregational life thrives. Our mission remains at the forefront and the health of the congregation prospers. We all want to be unifiers who strive to fulfill Apostle Paul's exhortation to the believers in his letter to the Colossians. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. By putting on these virtues and having the willingness to forgive, we become unifiers in our congregation. We can resist things that cause division, such as gossip, an unwillingness to forgive, refusal to look past differences, and an inability to let go of personal preferences and desires in order to serve others. Gossip is a divisive force. Gossip tears apart unity and renders a church powerless. It enables some to falsely elevate themselves while causing others to seek a place of refuge outside of the church. We can overcome the temptation to gossip with the desire to love one another unconditionally. Be a unifier by demonstrating how powerful the love of God is and let that love drive your actions. A member once shared with me her admiration for another member in the congregation. Because whenever a group conversation turned towards gossip, he always found a way to diffuse it. She said, he doesn't feed it, but in a nice way does not allow it to proceed. I would like to learn how to do that more. Therefore, turning off gossip can be admired and respected. Isn't this a way in which we can renounce Satan and all his work and ways, as we have stated in our confirmation vow? Let's try to learn how to do this more in the spirit of Christ. Every congregation is filled with imperfect people who make mistakes. We all sin. Each one of us from time to time have the tendency to say the wrong thing or do something that causes one or the other some pain. That's why a willingness to forgive is so important to the unity of a congregation. If we are unable to move past and reconcile missteps, then we are keeping ourselves from growing in the image of Jesus, and we are building up walls that divide us. Always remember that Jesus loves us so much that he died on the cross so we could be forgiven. Why would we then withhold forgiveness from somebody else? Be a unifier by always being willing to forgive. We are all different. 
yet we are all made in the image of God. For this reason, we cannot allow our differences to keep us from teaming up to serve our God, our congregation, and our world together. Our chief apostle said, we are different and these differences are an obstacle to being united. But seeing it with the Holy Spirit, we see it in a very different manner. Sure enough, we are different, but these differences are no longer an obstacle for us. It's a chance, it's a blessing, because we want to form a team, a team of those who fight with God and for God, a team of those who are called by God to serve Him and to spread the gospel. Our differences make us stronger. The Holy Spirit has given all believers spiritual gifts to serve others. Be a unifier by teaming up with those who are different than us to glorify God. Each one of us have our own preferences and desires, but we cannot allow them to dictate our behavior when we're serving our congregation. When we become stuck in our own way of doing things and demand that our preferences are considered above all others, we make ourselves out to be the greatest among equals. This happens when we've forgotten why we have been called and the example that Jesus has modeled for us. When the 12 disciples argued amongst themselves about who was the greatest, Jesus sat them down and said the following, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. You see, being a part of the church is about servanthood. It's about giving. It's about putting others first and lifting them up above ourselves. It's not about me and my preferences. It's about our obedience to God and his will and our desire to be like Jesus who humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Be a unifier by being a humble, obedient servant to all. When we are united as a congregation, we will be on mission for Jesus. That's why unity is so vital to the health of our community. We must never lose sight of the truth that unites us and seek always to be unifiers who are willing to love, forgive, and share the gospel.